My name is Bill and I'm an alcoholic. And this show is called It's Not What You Think. I can't imagine where the fun was in me struggling all my life for some kind of recognition from people. And when I eventually did get some, which wasn't very often, but I did, I'd either push it away, I couldn't handle it, or more often than not, it just I just felt that it wasn't going to be enough and I wanted more. And also, what was the point in me wanting people to like me, to love me, to need me? And then I go around upsetting everyone instead, pissing people off, pushing people away, and I ended up very lonely. Well, it may seem stupid and almost incomprehensible to want one thing, <clears throat> but without much effort whatsoever to achieve completely the opposite. But unfortunately, that's what we call alcoholism. That's what we call addiction. Well, I drank to feel happy. I drank to feel loved and needed. But I only ended up depressed and lonely and wanting to die. And it's a story that runs through the veins of alcoholics. You will never see it. But believe you me, that's what we live with. My journey to the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous started as a young boy, even before I ever picked up a drink. I had an insatiable thirst just for someone to believe in me, to want me, to love me, to listen to me, to show me some affection, to give me some one-to-one -one time. But it resulted in being who I am today. And that's an alcoholic. I came from a very practical family. We were very good at having a lovely home, making a few bob. But I also come, came from a very love-starved family, where there was pretty well no emotion. And on the outside, everything looked prim and proper and solid and strong. But inside there was no <clears throat> there was no giving or taking. It's just how we were, it was how our family was. And part of my insatiable appetite for appreciation was such that even if I did get as much care as I wanted in the world, I kind of know today that it was never going to be enough. And I do you know what? I probably always want just a little bit more because that's the story of my life that whatever I've had if I just had a little bit more I'd be happy but more of what I don't really know and I've never really been able to put my finger on it if by chance I'd have come f become a world champion in anything I know deep down that the disappointment would eventually have been quite crushing. Not because I'd achieved the pinnacle of success in this world, but because eventually the recognition I craved and I wanted and I needed, I knew wouldn't completely fulfil me. Because again, with that recognition, I would have thought, mm, if I just had a little bit more, I'd feel okay. And that's a problem with my alcoholism. I have a friend in recovery, a dear friend. I envy her recovery, her spiritual journey. But more importantly, I envy her, her parents. They, she has parents I would never have, I have never had. They are supportive, they're balanced, and if I was to describe them as anything, I would just say that they're wonderfully ordinary. But you know what? That made no difference to her whatsoever. Because to her, they were obviously never going to be enough. They were not enough of everything that they were, and everything that they were 
was never going to be enough. There was a certain yearning within her for something more, something different. Now, my parents were nothing like hers. In fact, they were the complete opposite. My parents were divorced, which her parents aren't. And yet, I still yearned for something I wasn't getting. I learned at a very young age to reach for the top, but to always expect the worst. That way, I could never get hurt. And I knew if I stuck to that principle, I would never be disappointed because disappointment to the alcoholic is so crushingly painful it's not worth contemplating. But however much I planned my life, rejection and disappointment still stung, which has always had a lasting Im impact on me. It's always left a lasting impression on me. It's left a lasting legacy of abandonment and of awkwardness. An awkwardness that I live with constantly, which in turn fueled a need for more recognition. And that's really the cycle of this alcoholic's thinking. Where it's a twofold problem <clears throat> of wanting more, and when I get it, it's not enough. Of seeking approval but not being able to deal with approval when I get it. Addiction is a double-edged sword of wanting something positive to fill every fibre of my body and a feeling of loss and complete abandonment when I eventually get it. Because my expectations don't ever match reality. And if my expectations are ever met, I just move the goalposts. And again, I just want a little bit more. Where I'm in a constant mode of neediness and of waiting for the anvil to drop and everything being wiped out. Of constantly looking for bigger or better or just some more. I'm always looking for that dob of cream to put on the top, or a tiny bit more wonder on top of every day. Climbing mountains, which I did a lot of with my wife, was fulfilling, breathtaking, and amazing. But that completeness and that feeling of awe that I got at the top of each mountain didn't last for long because I knew I had to go higher and it had to be harder and more tiring. And that's really the story of my life, the highs and lows, the approval or rejection, to be happy or sad. Whatever it was, it wasn't enough. Alcoholism is not what you you may think it is. It's really a disease of recognition, of neediness. It's a disease of not coping with praise and happiness because an alcoholic will never stay fulfilled. Whatever they're given, whatever they've got, the grass could always certainly be a little bit greener on the other side. So what's the answer to all this? Well, it's about right-sizing my needs. It's about matching my insides with my outsides. And it's about reducing my expectations. And it's about wanting what I have and not what I don't want. Alcoholism is never what people think. Because alcoholism ultimately is a disease of perception. And how I perceive the world and how, I, how the world actually is, is often two completely different things. Alcoholism, deep down, is a disease of dreaming. It's a disease of wanting what's not available. 
And you know, even if it was available, whatever was going to be the point. Because I knew eventually, deep down, I'd get that feeling of hollowness, of complete emptiness, and a feeling that nothing, absolutely nothing, was going to be quite enough. Build the shirt, Bristol.